All right, hello everyone. I'm gonna quickly go through the case. We have a 49 year old male originally presented to us with Rutherford III uh, claudication. Um, over the past six months, he's been on medical therapy and has failed supervised exercise therapy. And now his pain is pretty much, as soon as he walks less than a block, he has the pain. Um, he has a past medical history of an MI with multiple stents. He has uh, CAD and other arteries as well, and no known RCA CTO. He has heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction, and his EF is 25%, and he actually has a old LV thrombus, has hyperlipidemia and AFib. He's on aspirin, Eliquis, and Trestocoreg, Imdor, Eldacto, and Lipitor, obviously not on Pletol because of the heart failure, um, and obviously not a good surgical candidate because of the heart failure and the MIs. Mm -hmm. He is a former smoker. Initially, he actually okay. came to us for a cardiac cath. We ended up getting right groin access and obviously didn't weren't able to get to the heart that way. So we got left groin access, did the cardiac cath, and on the way out, we took this picture to kind of understand what was going on. This was treated medically for a long time and obviously with supervised exercise therapy. And like I mentioned before, now he's starting to fail and presenting to us for intervention. It's, it's a very, uh, uh, a very oh, good. good case to actually oh. view and review with it. I mean, especially patients who present with iliac CTOs. I mean, doing iliac lesions is a different story, but when you're doing iliac CTOs, the thought process of doing them actually changes because you have to ascertain where the CTO is, the origin, the proximal cap, the distal cap. Is it common iliac? Is it external iliac? Is it extending into the femoral arteries? And what's the pathology? So, <clears throat> Especially when you're trying to intervene, you want to make sure you do it in a safer uh, environment and you know your endpoints and the success rate. So like in this case, what PK is going to talk about uh, as well is like the patient here has a right common iliac and you could have multiple options. You could do it endovascularly in this case, which is our preferred treatment, keeping in mind the multiple risk factors. There are other options as well, doing a fem-fem bypasses and other surgical options, which somebody could take if an endovascular treatment changes. But with the evolution of... Uh, stents, uh, tr uh, treatment algorithms, devices, wires, catheters, our success rate, especially in our hand, has been exceptionally well. And the chances of treating somebody by an endovascular intervention, meaning with stents and balloons, is much higher. So one of the things that we've learned here is that, you know, a lot of times you have a lot of hibernation uh, in these vessels. And, you know, like we do in the tibial. So it's always good to sort of you know, decide how you go. And I know you, I'm going to pushing it without a, without a wire here, but I tend, I tend to do this just to kind of make sure that I have an occlusion. You can send a wire up. You don't have to send a wire up. And sometimes you're, you're surprised. So I'm just going to go up again. I know the internal iliac is medial. I'm just going to go lateral here and inject. Okay. Oh see, now, now, now look at this. This is so interesting. You can see that now you can see the level of hibernation. Um, <laughs> thanks, bye. Mm -hmm. So the level of hibernation is very important. So we're going to take another picture here. So you can see here. Okay, so it looks like it's, you know, it's it's a blunt flush occluded. But look, what's going on here? Got a little stagnation. So the question is, have I dissected with my catheter? I hope not. So now the best thing to do is when, you, when you've now diagnosed this or potentially diagnosed the mechanism by, by default, by not knowing because you don't have a uh, history of a dissection, the guys had numerous cardiac cats, so that might have been dissected during the right. cardiac cat. So now we're going to just take a picture from above. Mm-hmm. Okay. And why I'm doing this is to see whether whether there's still flow in the internal iliac, right? So there's your flow. So there is flow in the internal iliac. So so likely this is a dissection. So now you've made the diagnosis. This is a dissection of the common iliac, iliac cath because of the fact, go C minus, mm -hmm. that when I went with my catheter and I injected, you can see that there's stagnation of flow ipsilaterally. So the, so the worry now is am I in a dissection plane from below? So this is going to be much more difficult than we thought because of this situation. So now I'm going to go with this with this catheter up because I don't want to stent I don't want to stent the dissection plane obviously, which is going to create a major issue. So I'm going to go with my command wire. I chose a command wire. So you think you're saying it's a chronic dissection, which is it's a chronic flap. dissection, which is a retrograde dissection, which probably closed at the level of the ostium, and now you're filling through the internal iliac. You see that? That could all be dissection plane. Wow. We don't know. See this? See? Now, now oh, let's take a picture from, I know mm -hmm. his EF is low, but we're going to have to really kind of see where we are and figure this out. Like if that's the internal iliac, the then I know I'm in the true lumen. See? So now I'm in the true lumen. 
So I hope everyone at home can understand what I'm doing here because of the fact that you had the stagnation of flow. All right, I'm, right, I'm right. going to go ahead and now I'm going to advance my wire because I know I'm in the internal iliac. So now I'm going to go up to here and know I'm in the internal iliac. Now I am in the true lumen, right? So so now now that I know I'm in the true lumen, now I'm going to go ahead and come this way. I'm going to have Vishal just help me out by yeah. going to that side. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're going to now advance the wire. Now I'm going to confirm and let's see the flow, how the flow looks. And the beak so we have a little nipple. So I'm going to go ahead and advance as Vishal to just push forward slowly as I puff. There you go. And now you can see that the dissection plane is here. Ready? One more time. Okay, there it is. So the question is, is that a collateral or is that a dissection? So give me a straight glide now. Straight glide. Stiff? Straight stiff. Straight stiff, yeah. yeah. So you got that, Vishal. So I think that's what we're going to try here. So yeah. let's just try to dissect through this. So you see here, it looks like it's it's moving in this direction. Right. So we're going to try to just, uh, now I'm going to tell you to adva uh, advance your catheter. We know we're not in a collateral here, so let's just advance the catheter. Uh-huh. Any resistance? No. Okay. Going nice and smooth. That's why okay. I'm going slow. Good. Okay, let's stop there for yeah. a second. Good. I think it's, we crossed. We crossed. A good deal, sir. Beautiful. Yep. So you see, we've now crossed. The question is, how did we cross? That's the only worry. It looks like we're a little ipsy lateral. Go, go forward in. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. So now let's not let. let Okay, give, give another. Now we cross. So yeah, we give them three. Yeah. So now we'll just check our position. Nice. So we know now we're in. Okay, would you have used, like, let's say you're thinking about anterior axis, would you have used just the left radial diagnostic, like a frying French catheter, and put a pick down the left radial visualization? I think it's 100%. If, uh, I think it's an absolutely <laughs> smart idea. Uh, you know that very well too, Vishal, that if we need to do it, we're more than ready to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just felt looking at this that this should be something Correct. that's, you know, a bailout if we're not able to cross and, and then take it from there. So what we're going to do now is, now that we're done, we're going to do a quick IVIS. So we're just going to pull back. Start recording, please. Start recording. You can see IVIS in the order. You can see the catheter moving with the IVIS. And then you can see as we come down, you can see we're in the vessel and the order all the way. And then right about there looks like the CTO. Right there. Okay. And you can, are we sub intimal? Can you increase the gain, guys? There you go. Okay. Yeah. It looks like we're in the lumen, huh? Yeah. It looks, looks like, like the lumen. Right dot in the right, center. Right start through the lumen. Maybe right there, a little sub intimal. But, and then we're a lot of debris in the lumen. Yeah. And then we came out. Now we're in the true lumen. Oh, okay. Come Stop down. Let's see whether we see a dissection. See, so uh -huh. it's a retrograde dissection that really probably started with the flap is actually tacked up by the occlusion. So, so we, we got to make this uh, assumption that this is an okay, issue. Okay, stop. So give us a, a 5040 balloon, please. Um, um, 035. Actually, just work on this wire. Yeah, sure. Because it's you know why? Because the VBX, everything is, uh, is going to go through. Oh, no, the other one's going to go through an 035, 035 right? Yeah. The uh, live stream. Yeah, so yeah. let's let's use this. Let's change out. So so what we're discussing here is what wire to change to. Uh, 035, please. Um, uh, so what, what what we're doing is uh, we we decided to change out for an 035 wire because of our our, our thoughts of what what is a definitive therapy going to be. And I think here a couple of the things that you got to think about as an operator is, you know, what's what's exactly happening. One is one is if you do perforate, what's your bailout going to be? And then, and then, and then, how are you going to be able to do that with what type of support? Mm -hmm. So we're going with an undersized balloon here. We're going with a five millimeter balloon. I know a lot of you may be thinking, why is he using a five millimeter balloon? And we're using a five millimeter balloon just to make a channel and just to kind of understand how we enter the the aorta and how exactly are we going to go ahead and treat this aorta based on what we say. Yep. Yep. Okay. Good. Uh-huh. Just a five millimeter balloon just to get a channel. Eight, eight, ten. Okay, down. Mm -hmm. You're doing I know all right. super small and I understand that you may not even get flow, but I'm I'm a little conservative in these type of occluded aortas. Oh. 
So when you see the IVUS, this is the external iliac right at the proximal. Yeah. So you can see it's about an eight millimeter external iliac. So you definitely want to be able to go one to one with that. So now I'm going to be aggressive. I know I'm in a good luminal situation here. And I'm going to, since it's unraveled, I'm just going to go lateral a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and take one last, just a shot, just to see the ostium a little bit to understand. Yeah. All right, give us an eight millimeter, eight by 60 balloon, please. So we're gonna go up with an 8-0 really slow, watching how the balloon expands and how the patient reacts. What's nominal, guys? Slow. Okay, two. You okay? You gave 40 Four. Lasix? Yeah. Six. Nominal is eight. Six, six is fine. That's good. Okay. Four. Okay. We'll go to six. Six. Almost there. So now, you know, you also want to look at the balloon expansion. You want to go in the AP view, yeah. uh, see how the balloon is. So it's not really central luminal, but it's not eccentric. If you notice the wire on one side of the balloon or not, then you know that you can be very subintimal in the AP view. So here you can see the AP view, it's central, central-ish. So I'm okay. Are we across the internal here? I think we are, right? We are, I think. Okay, just down. So now I've, I've got a nice thing. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and decide on my stent. Zero both, please. I'd probably put a dilator and advance that up a little bit. Yeah. So we're going to advance this up a little bit with a dilator. We're right at the... So we're just going to put a dilator up and just push this up to the internal iliac, external iliac uh, junction here. There we go. Right there. A little more maybe. That's good right there, yeah. So now we're going to go ahead and walk this out just to have better access at this level. So it's a little better. Let's flush everything, flush our yeah. system here. So flush the other catheter. I think hemodynamics are very important in the iliac because otherwise you're going to repeat balloon this saying I've not expanded the lesion. Right. And then what's going to happen is you're, you're going to create a problem. Let's get an IVUS, guys. So we're going to make a, try to make sure that the IVUS flap does not flip in. Because if that's happening, then his tent is going to work. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. But for me personally, I mean, I understand it's even if it's a recoil, I would probably be, I don't know, personally, I would probably be a little bit, I did an expansion with an A2, like yes. you said. The mm -hmm. balloon expanded well. There were no areas of narrowing right. or compression. So mm -hmm. that's a good sign that at least the, the lesion did open up technically yeah. by balloon. Okay, we're so across. So the only, only thing is, are we missing, or did we really truly miss the ostium? ostium. Good point. See how you, the IVAS just jumped, jumped through? Okay. Maybe we didn't Record, really go please. to the true ostium. And maybe that's Record, why. We, get us an a, a 8 balloon, please, another one. Another one, the same one, no? No, the deflated balloon is better to you. It's probably not good to you. See that? Right there. Right there. So, so we might not have hit the ostium. And now we see the lumen open so up. So we have right. to go into by the iliac. Okay, that's a great point. So an IVUS again shows the shows the ostium so has well, not yeah. been expanded. All right, stop recording. So now we're going to go with the 80, 80 long, 80 balloon, 8060 or 80. Yep, 60 is fine. <laughs> Look to him. So now we're going to go up with this past the centimeter mark. Push this up a little. Yeah. Oh, right there. Okay, let's go up. Right, he, we've uh, given the patient already. Plavix. And that he's on the Eloquist for AFib. Uh huh. And we're, we're, we're just using heparin as well. What is your ACT? ACT is up above 250. Right there. Yeah, I think what we usually do is we start on a lower ACD, like 200, especially CTOs, iliac, we cross, and then we recommend to going up full. You could do a full on begin with, but uh, just to be honest, yeah. My AP was, you're fine. Yeah. Let's go to six atmospheres like you were. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Down. Now, let's hopefully the pressure will pop up to maybe our theory is correct. Give us an 035 wire here. Mm-hmm. Let me go up in the balloon. Oh. And I'm going to switch out my wire and go with an 035 wire here in case I have any issues. So now we're going to go up. And we know there are multiple coverage stents. Um, we, we can use VBX here. You can use live stream here. We've decided to use the live stream in this particular case. 
So we're going to go up now. They're both all indicated for the same reasons. And now we're going to go up. Mm. Let me go to one more view here. Give, let's give a little more Lasix. Okay, my friend. A little more. Give we already more. know the stent is behind the black dot. So that's another important thing to notice. I think that's good. Yeah. I think that's good. Let's go up here. You okay with this, Vishal? Yeah, I think so. I am. Go up. What's nominal? Uh, eight. eight. Okay. Uh-huh. Eight. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me go AP and save it, too. Mm-hmm. Don't come down yet. Uh-huh. Well, okay. Down. There you go. So pressure is getting pretty much close oh, wow. to normal. Yep. So it looks like we definitely hit the ostium here. And you it's can see by normal. the waveforms, it's almost equal one to one. So in this situation, I'm just going to go forward a little bit and just mm. go a little bit higher, go up a little bit. I'm just go to 10 here just to get the ostium. Nope, forward. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Six, eight, and 10. Okay, down. Okay, good. Nice. So now, now we know we got it. So now I'm just going to let it come uh -huh. down. Okay, let's take a DSA here. Very nice. Wow. The lumbar yeah. is open. Yeah, mm -hmm. but now the question is, what are we doing with the self our, our bottom? So I think we should re-ivis this <clears throat> and look at it. So let's, let's push this back in and change yeah. out the wire. Take this out. And the reason we're doing this IVIS now is really to understand... Um, how this this vessel works. <coughs> so aorta coming back into right into the stent, beautiful. Stent is well expanded, no indulations. Just gonna step on floor for a second. This is coming to the distal edge of the stent. Ah, we have to stent this. Yeah. You can see the plaque there, and then goes. So okay, we have a short segment of severe dissection. And then down in. So so measure. Minutes. So the external iliac uh, was eight, right? Stop recording. So, so give us a nine oh thirty. Oh nine oh forty. Might as well go across the internal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want, I, I don't. Can, I don't think we're gonna have a problem. Let's yeah, get, get a nine oh yeah. nine oh thirty or nine oh forty. But nine oh thirty. Nine oh thirty. Um, absolute. Um, absolute pro. Yeah. And now we're going forward. <coughs> and then go into it a little more. Uh huh. Good. Let me take a shot from above. Back. Hold on, let me get my sheet. Uh-huh. That's fine. Okay. Uh-huh. Let me uh, pull back a little bit. We're way in. Where does the stent start here? Right there. At four. But at, actually, at five. Oh, yeah. Now I see it. My eyes are so bad. I think it's no, pretty no. good. We like the distal end? Because distal end you want might to come back a little yeah, bit Yeah, I want to pull okay. back because there's a good yes, overlap. Slightly, yeah. But I think you're good. Yeah. I would probably start okay. from here. Go ahead, deploy it, Ibrahim. Ibrahim. So Ibrahim's going to deploy our stand here. So we're just going to cover the disc ledge because we did so, all so, this so, hard so, work. So, so, it always tends to jump forward. So he's going to pull it back, and he's just going to deploy it. One. He's going to let it flower. Yeah. Yep, he's going to let it flower. Okay, good. 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 So there it is. It's beautiful yeah. stent. Internal Perfect. iliac is open. Everything is open. So for those of you at home, you can see the gradient is normal. Iliac is crossed. Went to a 6 o balloon. And then uh, we're going to take a final pictures, and we're all done. So thanks again for, uh, for joining us here in New York for this wonderful MedStream case. Thank you to Vishal and Ibrahim for helping us with this case. And uh, we'll see you, uh, I guess, next time. So thank you again. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.